do. And so we come to worship, we come to church, and we never really get into this thing because we're used to holding back from God. Now I will say something I usually say in offering. Can a man love God? Amen. That I believe every Sunday we rob God. And I know that, that there's some financial robbery that takes place. I, I don't have to think about that. I know that takes place. But I'm talking about you rob God of what the angels give him every day. That you were created to be in the presence of God. And to tell him thank you for all of his blessings that have been bestowed on you. But we act as if God had to do it. We, we act as if God did it because we were so smart and we were so good. And I have one question for you. Would you be as gracious to somebody that wouldn't tell you thank you? As much as we love our children, uh, if every time you gave your child something, they acted like you had to do it. Before long, I'm going to stop doing it. Not, not because I hate them, but I don't want to teach them not to be appreciative of what is being done for them. And many of us come every Sunday and we act like we don't appreciate what God has already done. And so this text helps us. It helps us with some things. The text says that we got to take off. I hope that I get to the point that we got to put some on. And here's what I want you to see. That the text says that you've got to put off some stuff. You've got to put on some stuff before you can sing one hymn. It's in the text. When you go home, you can read it over. That before you could sing one hymn, before you could go into a, a praise and worship, it says you've got to be dressed for worship. Amen. That before you can enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and present his courts with praise, he said, you've got to get some stuff off you, and you have to put some stuff on you. Let me see if I can open up the text. And says, here's what not to wear to worship. Verse 5 to 11, Paul said, here are some things that you, you as a Christian, you need to take off. And so he starts off with saying that you've got to take off sexual immorality. It's just how it was last week. That, that some of the things that hinders us from worship is we've been messing around with adultery. Now, it's kind of quiet here, but I'm going to preach on it. Now, now, now some of you, some of you have been there, done it, you're guilty as child. That, that, that we've reached the place where there's no contriteness in us. So we get to worship, and we really can't worship because we feel uncomfortable. If you can't say amen, just say I shall be off your foot. And I know we don't preach like this anymore, but somebody has to tell it. We have to get our house in order. And let me tell you today, the men ain't no better than the women. The women just as bad before you believe this a male thing. There are some women. In fact, in fact, if, if there's going to be some adultery, I think they got to be a... Okay. Got to be two. And so we get to a place where, where we bring ourselves into worship and we can't worship because we know we are alone. We know that we've been doing some things we shouldn't do. Not only does he say that we've got to deal with the adultery, but we've got to deal with sexual lust. Means that we're just thinking about it. Can I talk to you? Mm -mm -mm. That when they pass, your mind goes down the road through the color and in the bedroom. Sexual lust. I know we don't preach like this in church. Some, some of you are so uncomfortable until it's not funny. But, 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 but the church has reached a place where the next step, it says, is perversion. I heard, I heard the, the Child Protective Council and, and, and the youth uh, secretariat say something that bothered me in my spirit. 
and they talked about the numbers of sexually abused children that are almost 200% up in this Christian nation. Someone say perversion. That we, we've reached a place where not only do we think it, not only, but we've moved into a category of stuff that should be off limits. And we should let our young people grow up unmolested. But we've got grown adults. People who have perverted minds doing things to our young people. And yet we turn a blind eye. We act like it doesn't happen. And then we come to church and try to help. We try to gloss over it like, like it didn't happen. But, but we've got to get to a point that we try to deal with this perverted generation. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, one over the other. I'm talking about everybody that's living today. We've got to deal with this problem. I, I, I know pornography is so available today. And not only uh, uh, do, we, do we have the perversion going on, but, but we've got some impure thoughts that go to our mind. Uh, you know, sometimes people come to church and, and, and because their mind is so in that perversion that they can't see you as just a human being. They, they, they almost got x-ray vision. They've gone too far in their thoughts. And before we can get to a place where God can use us in worship, we've got to make sure that our attention and our minds are pure and concentrated on Him. And let me tell you, when you've got that going on in your mind, it isn't long before you create or, or commit sinful action. And let me, let me say this, we've, we've reached a place as a country where we believe there are big sins and small sins. I got news from heaven for you, it's all sin. I all right, because you know, I don't, I don't do that. But sin is sin. It controls our appetite to replace. Lust is such a dangerous tool, and, and I tried to explain this last week, that, that God intended for us to keep ourselves until we get married single. I know this will be time. God intended for us to keep ourselves until we get married. Now, now, now here's the challenge. What, what God intended, and, and, and because we got different age groups here, please uh, excuse my simplicity. Uh, uh, what God intended was that if you never had an apple before, any apple would taste good. You catch what I'm saying? You catch, you catch what I'm saying? You, 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 is it, I put it in your lap. If you've never tasted an apple in your life and you come to this altar and you say I do you will enjoy your apple amen, amen. but if you don't have the red apple the yellow apple the green apple am I talking to anybody don't go get uncomfortable now if you, if you, if you, don't, if you don't have the big apple the small apple the round apple. But when you say I do, you start to say, I like the red better. <laughs> it's a green apple. I, I prefer red apple. But God intended for both of you to come into this thing enjoying just an apple. But because of our desire, and, and, and here's the thing about the apple if you bite it before you get married, you want more? <laughs> let me, let me. I know this is uncomfortable. That's it. You get a taste, an appetite, an addiction to apple. And you start looking more and more 
from all apples. And before you know it, you consume with the pursuit of this taste, this appetite, which you desire. And all of that comes with you to worship. And so even when you're supposed to be lifting up holy hands, you're looking at apples. I know what I'm preaching in this place. Give me a minute, I'll walk down your road. Somebody come looking for husbands, huh? Somebody come to church looking for, for which apple they can pick off, which apple uh, they can get and, and marry, which apple, and, 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 and vice versa. Some come looking for a juicy apple, looking for wife, looking, looking for wives in church. But it should all be just about him. That when you come into this place, God already knows who he's going to put you together with. It should not be a desire to please your appetite. Let me say this. Many, many people come to church. I, I've been pastoring long enough. They come to church until they say, I do to the apple. Amen. You don't fool me. I've had people come to church two years just to get married. And the minute they say I do, somehow they can't make it the church though. Because their intent was simply to please the loss that was burning inside of them. And so we get to a place where we cannot worship God because we haven't taken off these things. And then we get to a place where our greed consumes us. Many of us choose to work overtime. Let me, let me give some kudos. Let me give some kudos to another denomination on this Baptist day. Let me give some kudos. I respect the seven day event. You hear me? You can record it, you can play it. I respect it. Because they ain't going to do no overtime on their Sabbath. But about this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sign me up. God will understand that our greed consumes us. That God is not as important to us as he is. I know you're going down quiet. Because you don't want to say amen today. But you could say ouch. This is, this is good for the body. That we've been consumed by greed. That, that everything becomes a priority over God. I'm too busy. God will understand that, that I'm just so busy. But, but you can make time for other things. But you can't make time for the most important appointment of your life. And that's what you do and the time you spend in the presence of God. Got some news for you and it's in the text. The text says these things bring the wrath of God. These things, if you don't take it off, will hinder you from going to heaven. And will cause you to miss the place that God designated for you. Uh, the writer puts it this way, that you've got to put off some weights. There's some things hindering you from doing what God has called for you to do. There's some things that are stopping you from, from getting to where God wants you to get. But, but here's the thing. God won't take it off. You've got to decide to take it off. God won't come down and strip you of it. But you've got to get to a place that you yield these members to the Lord. So we've got to get rid of this stuff if we're going to put on our new clothes. More clothes must come off. That, that if we're going to be where God wants us to be and do what God wants us to do. And, and, and let me say this to you. I'm not preaching because I got it right. I hope you get this. That I've got some stuff that I'm still working on. That if ever you get to the place that you're perfect, you're illegal on earth. Because you're an angel. But we've got to strive on getting better. And so I'm not preaching condemnation. I'm preaching that we all got to get to a better place. We all got to strive to put on these things so that God can be 
praise and worship.